Hello everybody, in this episode I'm going to be showing you how to create proxy files inside of DaVinci Resolve. Right now I've got Premiere open and I'm going to be uh, using footage that I'm going to be editing in Premiere. I'm, gonna, I'm going to use Resolve to create the proxies. And there's a couple reasons for doing this. Now Adobe Premiere has their proxy workflow, but there's kind of uh, there, there's some pros and cons to using uh, Premiere and, or, over Resolve and sometimes Resolve over Premiere. Uh, Resolve is kind of the old-fashioned way of doing of doing a proxy workflow and Premiere is kind of the, the newer way of doing it. But some limitations you have with Premiere is if you are doing your proxy with inside of Premiere and you want to take some and you want to take the proxy footage home and edit it on a on a laptop at home, uh, you have to basically grab the entire folder with all the uh, high quality media and all the low quality media. If you do it with Resolve, you just basically can grab the proxy media take that home and edit it, and then later on take it back and relink it. Keep in mind that the workflow that I'm going to be using here is really going to be when you're planning on doing color correction uh, in Resolve as opposed to doing it in Premiere Pro. So this is a couple benefits of using this method is you're going to be able to take the footage. A couple of those benefits are going to be that you can take the footage uh, on a separate computer and not have the whole project stored on your computer. A couple of the benefits of doing this method once again is you can take the footage with you and it's a lot smaller and you don't have to take the entire project. You can just take the proxy with, with you and edit. And then you're going to reconnect these things once you're done with your edit inside of uh, Resolve and relink it to the high quality footage and do the color and do the color grading. So with that, let's get started. First of all, you got to know a couple of the settings that you have with the media that you're using. And if you're mixing different media from different cameras uh, with different settings, uh, you will have to pay attention to that as well and to pay attention to things like this, what your frame rate is and, of course, what your resolution is. Those are going to be a couple of the most important things you need to know when you go over to Resolve. It is somewhat important to know your resolution because you're going to have to understand what your aspect ratio is. And right here to figure out what your aspect ratio is, I've got, this is near 5K footage. I've got 4800 by 2700. So the way to figure out your aspect ratio is to divide your horizontal pixels by your vertical pixels. Uh, in this instance, it's because the horizontal pixels are larger than the vertical pixels as they are with most uh, video projects. I'm going to do 4800 divided by 2700 equals 1.7. Seven. You round it up 1.78 to 1. You have 1.78 pixels across for every one pixel up and down. That aspect ratio is also the same aspect ratio as 16 by 9. It's basically simplified down to 1, a ratio of 1 as opposed to whole number 16 by 9. So our aspect ratio is 1.78 to 1. So you'll want to know that when you open up Resolve and you start bringing in your footage. So let's go to Resolve. So here in Resolve, I'm going to go to my untitled project here. I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to go to project settings. And the main thing I got to do here is I got to set my timeline, my timeline frame rate to match the, the footage that I'm using, 23.976. And up here under timeline resolution, I just do 1920 by 1080. I'm going to leave it at that for right now because first of all, 1920 divided by 1080 equals 1.78 to 1. That's the same aspect ratio. So my timeline is going to match the aspect ratio. I'm going to save that. I can right click on this and say rename. I'm just going to call this project Much Ado Proxies. That's the project that I'm working on that's Much Ado About Nothing Commercial. So I'm going to hit OK. And now double click on this and it will open it up. So I've opened up Resolve here. I'm going to go down to Media tab, the first tab here. And I'm going to navigate to my hard drive and find the footage that I want to import. Here's my Much Ado folder. I'm going to go to my Video tab and get my footage. And this is all the footage that I have for the project. I'm going to do Control-A and select all, Command-A on a Mac. And I'm going to grab these and drag them down into my uh, master bin here. So now all the footage has been imported. This is in black and white. They knew that this commercial was going to be in black and white, so they just ended up shooting it in a black and white LUT uh, on the actual red camera here. But we're going to show you some different changes here and one of the other reasons you want to use uh, Resolve instead of Premiere to do your proxy workflow. Once again, it really just depends on what type of project you're doing and you'll have to decide the workflow yourself. But I'm going to go under Edit and I'm going to grab all my footage by hitting Control A clicking in here and doing control A, select everything. I'm going to grab the first clip, drag it, and drop it into my timeline. All right, now that everything is inside of my timeline, I'm going to go to color. Now this is kind of nice because when you export out your proxies, you may wish to have like a certain um, a LUT applied to your clip, kind of a certain look uh, to your clips applied. So when the editor gets this footage, if you shoot in something like log or some sort of log format and your footage looks really flat, uh, th then you can apply a LUT that's just applied for the editor, so the editor can kind of see the footage in a way kind of how it was intended to look. So let's pretend like this here is uh, this is not going to be, be in black and white. What I'm going to do is I've got my first clip selected here, and I'm in my color on my color panel down here. I'm going to go to the raw settings here on the camera, on the red camera, and if you're using uh, 
if you're using a footage like ProRes or H.264, you won't have to you won't have these raw settings here. But uh, with the Red Camera, Alexa Camera, and other raw ca types of cameras, you will have uh, raw settings. I'm going to go under Decode Using, and I'm going to tell it to go to the red default, which will take it back to color. And I put it under red default, and then the color is restored to the image, and it's back to the red default uh, look. But now I can start giving this a specific look. Let's go. In, I'm going to go to my uh, color wheel panel here, and we're going to start doing some things to change this. Let's get on a subject here, move in until we see a subject. And actually, this clip's a little short, so I'm going to go to the next one, do the same thing. Let's go to my raw, pull this down, and we're going to do it to red default. There we go in color. Move my timeline in a little bit so we see a little bit of the main image. I'm going to go to my color tab here, and we're going to do a little bit of correction on this thing. Well, maybe not correction, just giving it maybe a look. And a couple things you can do is you can make your own looks here. First of all, I'm going to brighten up this image a little bit, turn up the gamma. We're going to add some contrast. I'm going to grab this and add some contrast to the image. Uh, but maybe we want to give it a certain look. So you can do your own grading here and save your own LUT, create your own LUT basically that you can apply to all your clips. Or you can go up and right click on your clip and go to 3D LUT and choose a LUT that's already installed. And you can install several different types of LUTs. You can go online and find different LUTs that uh, can, can be added to DaVinci Resolve. But under this, I'm going to go into Film Look. I'm going to do a Rec 709 uh, Fuji Film. Let's try this one and see what it looks like. Uh, that's a bit dark, so what I'm going to do is grab my gamma and crank it up and uh, get a look that I like there. So let's, let's say that I've got this finished. I like this look. This is the look that I want to use for this scene or for, for all these clips on, on my timeline here. And what you can do if you want to apply that to everything, uh, first of all, you can create a gallery still. I'm going to do Control Option G. If you're on a Mac, it's Command Option G, and it will create a gallery still. And that's basically the effect that I just created saved there as a still. So now I can actually select all these down here. I can do Control A and select everything, and I can move up over this um, this gallery still and hit my middle mouse key. Click it in, and it adds that look to all my clips. Now I have the, that one added to all my clips. Some of these might need to be customized a little bit, like this one looks like it's a little too dark. So I can, uh, while I'm on that, I can just crank that up a little bit, maybe add a little bit more contrast. There we go. And I'm going to go through each one of these clips and just make sure that, uh, that, that the settings look, look decent for the editor. And right there, that one needs to be cranked up a little bit. That one's a little too bright. So once again, you can bring these down and just kind of fine tune these. And if I like that one there, I can just, uh, I can move my mouse over, hit middle click, and it will apply this previous one. And I'm going to go through and get each one of these looking fairly decent. You don't really have to do this, but it's kind of nice just for the editor so they don't have to sit there and look at like a really flat image. There we go. That one looks good. That one's too bright. So go there and one more. And there we go. So I've got that look applied to every single one of my, to all my clips in the timeline. Like I said, you might have to go through and fine tune some stuff so it kind of matches a little bit more. You don't have to do perfect color correction on this yet because they're just going to be editing proxy footage. And there we go. I know this is kind of an extreme LUT, but just, just so you kind of get the idea. All right, once I've got a lot applied to every single one of these, I'm going to go to Deliver. Now, this is where it gets kind of important. you got to be careful what you're doing here, so you, you do, it, do it right. And under the Deliver tab, I'm going to move over here to this area, and we see the single clip and individual clip. I don't want to export this whole timeline out like a single clip. I want to do these as individual clips, so we have proxy footage we can work with. I'm going to scroll down and set my video. You have video, audio, and file. So under video, I'm going to pull this down. Let's say I want to use a QuickTime works fine as a wrapper for the DNX codec. So I'm just going to do them as QuickTime videos. You can do them as QuickTime videos, or you can do them as, or you can do them as DNX. If you're doing QuickTime, you, if you're on a Mac, you can even use ProRes instead of uh, DNX. I'm using the DNX Avid codec, uh, but I'm going to pull down this codec here, and I'm going to find something that matches. I'm going to pull this down. I'm going to change the quality. I'm going to take this to DNX HR low bandwidth, which is around, uh, I'm guessing around 40 megabits per second. A uh, lot less data than you have in your in your red footage. So I'm going to do the low bandwidth, and I'm going to scroll down. I'm going to choose a resolution. Uh, I can use 1920 by 1080, depending on how fast my system is. If I want to take it down even further, I'm going to go to 1280 by 720. And I just want to make sure that my uh, that my resolution here matches my aspect ratio of my uh, previous footage. I'm going to go 1280 divided by 720. Otherwise, it'll it'll end up letterboxing or pillar box pillar boxing your uh, footage and you, you, that won't damage it permanently, but it, it just will look kind of obnoxious to edit it in that form, in that aspect ratio. Hit enter, and this matches 1.78 to 1, so I have the exact same aspect ratio, so it will match without doing any letterboxing. Now we're going to go to audio. Audio is not as important usually when you reconnect footage and resolve it, kind of ignores the audio attributes, but it's uh, if you wanted to match uh, your audio exactly, once we go under audio here, I'm going to pull down uh, the number of my channels here. 
a couple things with the red footage. My red footage will have like four, will have two audio channels, each one being a mono. So I'm going to pull this down and just say same as source. And I'm going to check mark with the red footage. I can check this. It really doesn't matter because uh, it will reconnect quite easily later on. If you're doing a stereo, you just want to leave this unchecked. With red footage and you got two mono tracks like I have, I'm going to just check mark that. I'm going to go under File, and this is really important here. I'm going to go uh, File Name Uses. We want to make sure that it matches the source name. That's how it attaches, reconnects the, the footage from the proxy to the high quality, is it reads the source name. So I'm going to check mark source name. Now I'm going to move up and hit Browse and tell it where to save these. I've got a folder that I've already created. I'm going to go under Flyer. I'm going to go under my hard drive, and we'll go to Much Ado, and I'm going to find one that I... I have proxies that I've already done this project with uh, Premiere proxies. I'm going to go under Resolve Proxies because I'm doing it a different method. So this is where the folder that I'm going to save the Resolve Proxies. I'm going to hit OK. And now I'm just going to hit Add to Render Queue. It'll add that uh, the 13 clips there, and I can just hit Start Render. Let this render, and then once it's done, I'll come back and show you the next steps. OK, now that all my proxies are done, I'm going to open up Premiere. And in Premiere, I'm going to import my clips. I'm just going to select my Resolve Proxies folder and import the folder. And one thing you want to make sure, and this is super important uh, that, that you've done, is uh, look at the footage and look at the time code. And you make sure that the time code matches up with the original footage. So I'm just going to tilt over this and kind of look at it. And right here I've got uh, kind of this random time code that the, that the camera was generating instead of like starting from zero to whatever. Instead of starting from... Uh, starting at zero on each clip. I do have a unique time code for each one of these. I can see that the time codes are matched up here. So just a quick check on there. This is my high quality footage. This is my, uh, this is my proxy footage. But now you can just take that footage and you can transfer them over to a separate hard drive. You can take them home and start editing. So let's look at this footage here. I'm going to grab all my clips. I'm going to drag them to a new timeline and drop them in. And here I've got all my proxy footage, and I've got those LUTs applied to it, and this is 720 footage. And one thing you'll notice now is when I'm editing, especially since this is DNX, if I hit something like JKLJ to rewind, K to stop, L to forward, it reacts immediately. If you're using like uh, the high quality red footage, or you're using H.264, or some uh, footage that's not optimized like H.264, you're going to notice that it responds really slowly. And also, as you grab your playhead and you scrub through this, uh, it scrubs through really quickly and it updates really quickly and you can see the footage that you're looking at uh, when you're scrubbing through it. If you scrub through the original red footage, you'll see it kind of stuttering and, and, uh, and pausing a bit and then finally catching up to where your playhead is. So this is optimized footage. It is uh, DNX footage and it runs really smoothly and quickly. Same as ProRes. ProRes is a nice optimized media as well and you can bring it down to a smaller size so you can, it is very, very easy to, very good footage to edit with. So now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to edit my project and uh, I'm going to come back with a finished uh, with a finished edit here and then we will take it back to Resolve for color correction. Now that I've got a project finished here, I've got an edit that, I, that I've done here, a quick little edit for this little 30 second commercial. Uh, now we're going to be taking it off to uh, Resolve. So I like the edit, I like the sound mix and everything and I'm going to take it off to take it out to Resolve to do the color correction. So I'm going to go up to File and I'm going to go Export and I'm going to export out a Final Cut Pro XML. This one I'm just going to save my desktop for convenience here. Just go to Desktop and I'm calling it 7 Proxy, uh, 720 Proxy Edit. Save that to my desktop. OK. And now I'm going to go to Resolve. And under Resolve I've got my proxy project. I'm just going to make a new project and make this my color correction for this project. I'm going to right click, go Project Settings. I'm going to set my time frame. My timeline at uh, 23.976, and uh, this is this is basically 5K footage. Right now, I'm just going to do 1920 by 1080. It depends on your delivery format, but right now my timeline's set at that. If I'm just delivering this to YouTube or to an HD monitor. It's going to work just fine. Otherwise, you can choose different settings here. And my options with the set, with my 16 by 9 would be 1920 by 1080 or uh, Ultra HD. I'm just going to stick with the 1920 by 1080 and save that. Uh, right click and say rename. Call it Much Ado Greater. I'll call it Much Ado Color Grade. Double click on it to open it up. Okay, and the way I'm going to start this is I'm going to go to Media, and this time I'm going to import the high quality media. I'm going to go to my hard drive and find the high quality. I've got it under Video, and this is the this is the 5K footage here. I'm going to go into here and grab this footage, select it all, drag and drop it into my uh, media bin down here. And you can also put these in folders and create folders in here just by right clicking and creating uh, a bin and then and, and and uh, putting them inside of specific bins if you wish. And I did do a sound mix on this as well. Now I'm going to go to Edit. 
Now, one thing I did not do is I did not import my audio for this. It really depends on what you're doing. If you're doing your final mix out of your final sound mix out of Resolve, I'm not. I'm going to have an audio file delivered to me as a uh, stereo mix. So actually, I'm going to go back to my media tab and import the audio mix here. Go into the Much Ado folder, and here is my final mix down. I'm going to grab that and drop it in there. I'm going to go back to Edit, and under Edit, we're going to go File, Import, AAF, EDL, XML. I'm going to import an XML. So I'm going to go to my desktop where I saved that. There's my 720 proxy edit. Select on that. And you got a few settings here. So we're going to import the timeline. We're not going to automatically set the project settings because we want to set our own resolution, which we already did at 1920 by 1080. It's going to use the pro project resolution as opposed to that uh, as opposed to the XML resolution. I'm going to uncheck automatically import source clips in a media pool because I've already done that. So I'm going to force it to, to relink to the high quality footage here. I'm going to uncheck this. And I can leave this check mark if I want. Use sizing information, not really important. Hit OK. Hit Close. And down here, here's my timeline. I'm going to hit Shift Z, which zooms up and shows the entire timeline. There's my audio is unlinked down here. That's because I did not actually import my audio. So I can actually do away with that. But all my video here is relinked. And it's relinked to the high quality red footage now. I'm going to lock my video, all my video tracks here. And I'm going to hit Control A to select all and hit Delete. And it's going to delete all my audio down there. Now I can grab my final uh, mix down here, drag and drop it in, and I got my final stereo mix right there. And then I can unlock this, go to color, and now I can start doing uh, my color grading on the project. Everything's imported, everything's relinked, everything's uh, attached to the high quality footage. And now I can select a clip here, I can go to my raw footage, or, or my raw camera raw setting, and I can go, let's tell I'm going to do this. I'm going to do it by clip here, and if I want to, now I can go to my red gamma, I can tell this to do log red log here and I'm going to grab my saturation since this was shot in black and white and I'm going to set my saturation to 1 which brings it up to 100% saturation and now I can actually start doing my grading. And there we go. Since that's set back to raw, if I want to set the rest of these back to raw, I can actually select the first one here, hold down shift and select the last one, select a range and I can just middle click over this one right here and now all those red setting all those red raw data settings have been set to all these clips and I can start grading my log footage, my basically my very flat footage, which gives you a higher dynamic range, and uh, you have a lot of latitude for a correction. In fact, if we want to get a quick look at what this might look like from log footage, I can right click, and we can go to 3D LUT, and I can go to, uh, actually we can even go to area, because uh, area of the log C is, is similar to the red, so I'm going to click on this, and it will do a, a quick conversion to Rec. 709. Bring down the Bring down the exposure a little bit on the gamma, and there we go. And then, of course, you can do other corrections. But anyway, so there you go. That is the proxy workflow. If you're going from, uh, if you're going to be doing the convert, if you're going to be doing the proxy footage, encoding that in in Resolve, taking it into Premiere, Premiere and doing the editing, and then taking it back into Resolve to do the final color grade. If you have any questions, please post them. Thanks for watching.